Today, I wanted to talk to you about the modern Parker dual fold. Um, the two pens that you see in front of us here um, are resin versions of the, the dual fold Centennial. And I wanted to talk about whether I think these pens are worth the $450 street price um, that they tend to go for these days. Um, you know, last time I talked about the Platinum Preppy, um, so I thought maybe we can talk a bit about something on the um, other end of the, the spectrum, at least at least in, in my collection. So whether I think this pen is worth $450. Well, for starters, I thought, when I was thinking about this pen, I thought that I wasn't a fan of modern Parker pens. Um, turns out, I just really dislike the cheaper um, Parker pens. I think they're um, made in Asia, which which is not a problem in itself, but the quality of them are just terrible. Um, especially, I'm thinking about pens like the IM, um, the Jotter, the, the Urban, to some extent. So, funny story, the Parker I am is the only pen that I have ever returned um, to to the reseller because it was just such a terrible pen in terms of quality. Now there's been a lot of pens that I don't like, um, like the Pilot Metropolitan, for example, or or you know, some of the Fabric Castell pens that that just don't fit my particular style. But the I am was the only pen in all of the pens that I've ever purchased that I've returned because I was just so appalled. Um, by the quality of the pen. Uh, but what I realized is that as you make your way higher into the Parker range, the pens are actually pretty nice. You know, the um, dual fold here is the, the flagship of Parker's current lineup. But if you go, um, you know, even pens that are not um, flagship pens for Parker, pens like the Sonnet, the, the Premier, they're actually pretty nice pens. Um, the Sonnet doesn't particularly fit me very well, and I have some thoughts about the Premier, but they're, they're actually, you know, objectively fairly nice pens. Um, so, so I'll cut straight to the chase. I'll use this, the big red version of this pen to, um, to talk through the rest of the video, but I'll cut straight to the chase. I think relative to what else is available in the U.S. market for about $450, I think this pen is worth it. Um, now, of course, I'll caveat that by saying I realize the fountain pen hobby is ridiculous. $450 for a pen is ridiculous. Um, I'm well aware of that, but relative to what else is on the market, I think this is actually not a bad value. Um, so I'll, I'll walk you through a bit of why. Um, before I start though, one thing that's been interesting about this pen, especially the big red version of this pen, the price has fluctuated quite a bit um, in the past few years, at least from a street price perspective. Um, I've seen this pen go new on Amazon for as low as $195. Um, unfortunately, I didn't catch that, um, that sale. Um, I bought this pen um, for about $230 um, several years ago. Um, and then I've seen it jump up to as much as $650, $700. And now it seems to be hovering around 450. So that's I, I think that's just you know interesting to note. Um, I've never seen such a fluctuation in, in pricings of, of pens before. Um, but why do I think this is worth the $450 price point? Well, let's talk about what else you can get for that range. Um, so if you start with the Japanese pens, um, 450 is more than something like this, the Pilot 912. This is um, probably my favorite of the flat style Japanese pens. Um, but I think compared to the, the dual fold, um, this lacks a bit of style. You know, this just, it looks a bit boring. Um, but, so it makes sense that the, the dual fold is a lot more expensive than this. Something closer to the dual fold's price point is the Sailor Pro Gear. This, um, I actually have to be honest, 
until I was looking at notes for, for this video, I didn't really keep up with sailor pricing in the US. The pricing for these little guys is cl much closer to the price of the dual fold than I thought. Did you know that just regular pro gears, regular old 21 karat pro gears go for um, over $300 these days? Um, and special editions go for over 400 or even sometimes close to $500 for a pro gear. Um, so I think that's that's one of the reasons why I think the the Parker actually represents a, a decent value is because if you look at what else you can get from, you know, if you look at Japanese pens, it's, you know, it's not bad. And if you compare um, what you get from something like a pro gear to the, the dual fold, um, what I think is interesting is, you know, you can argue what has better um, recognition. You know, I think Parker has uh, a more storied history and arguably is a more recognizable brand just internationally. Um, but Sailor, of course, has been very popular lately with collectors and has a tremendous following of its own. But if you try to be objective about these two pens, the quality of the materials used on the Parker is higher. Um, what I mean by that is if you look at how like the, the material is finished, um, if you look at how it just looks like this has been milled rather than just injection molded, uh, molded it just overall feels like the Parker has a higher material quality than the Sailor. If you look at the Sailor, you find evidence of the um, where the injection molding, like for example, you can, I don't know if the camera will pick up the, the line there, you can pick up the evidence of where it's been injection molded. It's just a cheaper material overall. Um, and you may say, you know, the Sailor, you buy it, one of the reasons is for the 21 karat nib, which yes, fair, it's, it's a very nice nib, but the Parker nib is no slouch either. So first of all, you know, the Parker is an 18 karat, um, so, you know, you can argue the Sailor has it beat there, but it's a bigger nib. And I think the way, um, I don't know how clearly it shows up on camera, the, the dual fold has a two-tone nib. And I think the design of the nib um, is as nice or nicer than the Sailor. You know, it's a, the Ace of Spades nib. I think it's, it really is, you know, not leaving anything on the table compared to the Sailor. Um, so because, you know, the dual fold, I think is a, is a flagship pen where the, the pro gear is not, you know, if you want to go to a king of pen, you're way beyond the, the dual fold's price range. The, the materials are, are nicer. Um, and the nib from a, you know, quality, size, um, and even as you'll see later from a writing experience perspective, it doesn't really um, fall short, in my opinion, from, from the pro gear. So, you know, compared to Japanese pens, it's, I think, a pretty good value. Now, what about European pens? So, one of the things I think Parker tries to do is, they, they I think they think of themselves as like the French Mont Blanc. Um, how successful are, are they at that? You know, I, I would say not very. Um, but if you try to compare them to Mont Blanc, you know, something like, you know, the flagship, the 149, um, this is um, far um, exceeding the price point of the Parker. Um, the 146, um, which I don't have in front of me here, is one of my favorite pens to use on just a you know, everyday writing perspective, and it's about the same size as the as the dual fold. Uh, but even that pen, um, you know, I just looked up online, and the the street price for a new one of those is around seven hundred dollars, which is still significantly more than this. So Mont Blanc, you know, makes this look like um, a bit of a bargain. But if you think about what else you can get from European pens, if you think about brands like Lamy, um, the Emporium. Um, which is their flagship pen. It doesn't have a, a unique nib and, um, you know, has a heavy metal body, and, um, which, you know, whether you like metal or resin, that's 
that's your call. But that pen, um, it just doesn't have the same reputation um, and it doesn't have the sort of the bespoke nib um, of something like this. Um, and then, you know, other, other European brands, Waterman, which is the same um, parent company nowadays as, as Parker, for, for this price range, you can get something like an exception. Um, I have a slim version of the exception here, uh, but this is a, you know, a very nice pen, but this is much quirkier than something like the dual fold, which is, I think, more recognizable and uh, gives you just an overall better writing experience. Um, and then, you know, compared to the Italians, um, I'm personally not a huge fan of Italian pens, just, you know, personal preference. But if you look at what you can get from brands like Visconti, um, you're really, um, at $450, you're not really into the flagship pens from those brands either. So I think, you know, compared to other pens from Japan, from Europe, from wherever, um, $450 is actually not... Um, a huge ask for something like this. Um, the one brand I, I did want to mention that I, I forgot to is, is Pelican. Um, this pen is approximately the the width. Uh, I think it's a little bit shorter, but it's it's a, approximately approximately the width of an M eight hundred. And like the other brands we mentioned, um, four hundred fifty dollars doesn't quite buy you an M eight hundred these days. Um, and from a, you know, build materials and writing experience perspective, I don't think this um, leaves anything or, you know, gives anything up to the M800. Uh, that pen does have uh, a more sophisticated filling system, but in, in my hands, at least, I find this pen more comfortable. Um, and again, it, it significantly undercuts that pen um, in terms of price. So. Compared to what else is on the market, I think this pen is a pretty good deal. Um, the other thing that I think makes this pen a great deal is that like Mont Blanc, Parker has a nib exchange program. So if you were to buy this pen, you know, and you get it in the fine, medium, or broad, or whatever is commonly available, and you want a, a more interesting nib, you can send this pen back to France and for free of charge, assuming you buy the pen new um, and within a certain amount of time, and get the nib that you want. So this particular pen um, went through that process. This is a, um, if you can see that, it is a number, what number is that? 94, which is uh, medium um, italic. So I think that's pretty cool that you can get a factory, essentially a factory stub nib on um, a new Parker dual fold, which is something that is not, you know, easy to do with many brands these days. So um, with that, let me show you a bit of how this pen writes. So I'm almost to the end of my Astrology notebook here, but still have a few pages left. So let's see if we can waste some paper with this. So this is Parker, dual fold. This is the Centennial. Um, this is the big red. And the nib Um, and if you're curious, this ink is the Irushizuku. Uh, Iru 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 is that what it's called? The pilot, the pilot Yamabuto. So, as you can see, I think this is a pretty cool nib. Um, it's a bit on the dry side, but I think the fact that you can get essentially a factory stub nib with um, a flagship Parker pen um, in a nib that looks pretty cool. I think that's that's pretty cool. And I think even for, for that alone, um, the call it $450 um, 
street price is pretty reasonable. So since we got to the nib, um, I did want to talk to you a bit about what this nib feels like. So if you have in mind that these um, gold stub nibs are super smooth, you would be mistaken. So I don't know if you can hear on camera, but there's quite a bit of feedback. And what I found is that this is actually pretty common with um, stub nibs that have tipping material. So if you've ever used like a pilot vanishing point stub or um, the one that, that feels the closest to this, which um, unfortunately um, is on loan to a friend of mine, but the, the Pilot 743 with the SU nib, um, it feels very, very similar to this. And the nib is actually about the same size as this um, as well. Um, um, other pens that feel sort of similar, the Waterman Karen um, that you can also get with the stub nib, um, fairly similar. The, the difference between um, something like this and something like the Pilot, the, the 14K um, number 15 SU nib, that nib does feel a bit softer um, and a bit bouncer, bouncier. Um, dual full nibs have a reputation for being very stiff. And I actually think, you know, I may be wrong, but I actually think that's where um, the name originally came from in terms of the, the way that the nib was, was made. Um, it was a very stiff type of uh, writing experience. So certainly holds true today as well. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for more of that silky smooth stub nib experience, um, you really are better off with just a cheaper steel um, stub nib, like anything like, you know, a Pilot 1.0 or, um, you know, something on, on a uh, Prera or even like a Lamy 1.1 or Twisby offers great Yovo number no. five or, or number six size nibs um, in 1.1 and 1.5. Those give you a much more, just a much smoother stub writing experience than something like this. But that said, the benefit of having a nib like this is that it really does show off the, the shading of the ink. And having that feedback with the stub nib is, is really quite pleasant to use. And you can see it is very stubby, very thin, horizontal, very thick, um, vertical. So anyway, hope that was fun. Um, so I'll <laughs> repeat myself again. I think, you know, $450, you know, ridiculous amount of money to pay for a pen, I know. But within our niche little fountain pen hobby, compared to what you can get from, from Japan for, for the same price and what you can't get from other European players for the same price, I think $450 is pretty fair. Okay, thanks for watching.